Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem, they reached Bethage at the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent to his disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowd that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet, Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garlands and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in our hearts. Let us go forth in peace. Through the name of Christ.
A reading from the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are beginning this season, this week, the Holy Week as we call it, when we once again step into a story, a film, if you would, that has connected to us in deep and meaningful ways in recent years, decades, and into our past. And I would venture, just like those children who watch those movies over and over again, that every time you see it, there's something new that you gain some new insight about the story, and most likely, a new insight about who you are and your story. We call this the passion. It's from the Latin. It means the suffering. And so this is the story that we look at again. Jesus suffering for you and for the world. Now, Jesus was a rabbi. It was his chosen work. And so when he turned age 30, which was the age for someone to begin their own rabbinic school, he gathered to himself 12 students, which was the custom, one for each of the tribes of Israel. And he set out on this mission to educate them, and then they, in turn, he would send out to educate others. We also know that Jesus, when he started this work, he also added to this, 
this beautiful and delicate work of healing. He was the fulfillment of this elevated leader, this elevated Messiah, Messiah, anointed leader. And the prophecy about this anointed leader was he would be one who would bring restoration and rest to people. He was a healer. We know right now our prayers have been healing for, yes, people we know who have been affected by COVID-19. We've been praying for those who love and care for those who are sick, those in the hospitals on the front lines. I don't know if some of you have seen in New York City, there was this call to all of the citizens of Manhattan. At 7 p.m. every night, you step out on your balcony or you open up your window or wherever you are, and you cheer and you clap for those who are working on what we're calling the front lines of this war. And so there's footage of that busy city, that city that never sleeps. And all of a sudden you hear this all across the landscape of those buildings, people cheer. Jesus was a healer because it symbolically represented the mercy and the love of God for all of creation. And so he did this work teacher, teacher of truth, healer, a healer of bodies, and a heal, healer of spirits. But it's in Luke chapter 9 that Luke says in his account of that film, of that story that we, we see, we watch over and over again, that he says that Jesus turned his face resolutely towards Jerusalem. In other words, he knew he was going to Jerusalem this time it was for a deeper, harder reason. This would be for his passion. And I, I like what that word passion does for us. It does point us to the suffering and its roots. But it also reminds us that to truly love someone, to truly love someone, it's going to cost you something. But there's some level small all the way to this this grand act of Jesus there's going to be something that will ask you to suffer for your love for others so we're going to hear the story again as Jesus turns his face resolutely towards Jerusalem and to his passion his passion for you in the name of the Father and of the Son disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover meal. 
When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes it is, it is as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Then Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. He said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. 
Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him was a large crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send more than twelve legions of angels? But thou hast then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way. At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power, coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. 
Why do we still need witnesses? You have not heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then it was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded them. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. 
Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people, as a whole, answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel, let him come down from the cross. Come down now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants, for he is the Lord. He is God's Son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, 
Why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came down out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those who were with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn from the rock. He then rolled a giant stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that imposter said while he was still alive, after three days I will rise again. Therefore command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people, he has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, We have a guard of soldiers. Go. Make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Let us pray for the church and the world.
Edward, our bishop, Colson, our bishop coadjutor elect, Daniel, bishop of Uruguay, and the clergy and people of the Diocese of Oklahoma and our companion Diocese of Uruguay. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose indeed for this cathedral that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good, especially for Donald, our president, Kevin, our governor, and David, our mayor. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, especially those in need of long-term healing, Jane and Pete Holcomb, Terry Jackson, Ethlyn Mills, Ken and Margot Nesbitt, Alice Costello, Kitty Keith, Joan and Hank Bowen, Ted Colson, Josephine and Richmond Tweet, Lelia Sapper, Linda Rosser, Kathy May, Virginia and Don Ludlow, Susan Ponstein, Mary Crabb, and Margaret Colley. We pray for all in need of more urgent healing, especially Will Schneeberger, Ann Colley Fowler, Hugh Behrman, Kathy O'Connor, Mary Ellen Meredith, Wendy Kuser, Deacon Gary Williams, Gary Bear, Lee Eldridge, Leon Dement. For the needs of all who are impacted and afflicted by the coronavirus and all healthcare workers on the front lines, and for the special needs of those infected by the virus. Amy Masters, Don Hart. Defend all who are serving our country, especially those in dangerous circumstances. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for all souls, Oklahoma City. In the cathedral cycle of prayer, we pray for the ministry of our health care team. For all who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, and for all who are traveling, give rest and that light perpetual shine upon those we hold in memory this day and for the recently departed. Carolyn von Steele Brokenbach, Henry Blenderman and Gail Malmstrom, Tim Cott, Mary Totenkall, and we pray that we may share in all your saints in the joy of your eternal kingdom.
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Deliver you from all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. morning. It is Palm Sunday, and I wish that you were right here with me, like you usually are, but I'm glad we can do this together. Palm Sunday is a day where we have a lot of readings from the Bible, a lot of them. The first one we heard was about Jesus coming into Jerusalem, and it was a triumphant procession. And this makes me think about how I've kind of been wishing for a triumphant entry of someone. I've, I've been wishing during this scary and uncertain time that someone would appear, kind of like a movie, or like how the basketball players come in at Chesapeake Arena when the season's going on and there's all kinds of loud noise. That's what this reminds me of. And I wish that someone would appear and say, hey, it's everything's okay. Everything's going to be okay. But then I look at the gospel reading a little bit more and I find out that it was a triumphant procession. There were people waving palms and yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. There were people saying that, but I imagine there were not limousines. There was probably not a parade like we think of a parade. And so that makes me think that maybe I should be listening for something more simple because Jesus was riding on a donkey. That's a pretty simple thing for a king to ride into town on. So instead of waiting for some big magnificent announcement from a really sparkly, sparkly uh, a vision or, or something, I want to listen for Jesus in simpler things like the birds singing outside my window this morning when I opened my eyes. It's a sign that Jesus is with us. Or my neighbors outside my house who are practicing social distancing, but I would say we're getting to know each other better than we ever have before. That's a sign of Jesus with us. Or even here in Oklahoma, all of our redbud trees are in bloom. And each one of those pink blossoms reminds me in a simple way that Jesus is with us. Jesus is in his kingdom. Jesus never left. Jesus is with us. And every time I see one of those signs, I'm challenging myself and you to say, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I hope you have a great week. And I hope you know that, that we are with Jesus. And Jesus says, it's going to be okay. He doesn't say it with flashing lights, and he doesn't say it with a big parade of limousines or basketball players. He says it with tweeting birds and with gentle neighbors and with beautiful red bud blossoms. Have a good week, friends.
Good morning, everyone, and it is my honor and pleasure to welcome you to St. Paul's Cathedral on this Sunday morning and a, a blessed Palm Sunday morning to all of you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone who has been helping us and um, working so well to put these videos together so that we can uh, continue to bring you uh, the church, even though we are all um, by ourselves, we are by ourselves together. We're separated, but together. And a special thanks to the clergy of St. Paul's and to Scott and the singers, and also to Mary Lou Jarvis, who is doing, um, she's the only one in the altar guild in the sacristy right now, and that in very limited ways, but doing a great job. And then uh, Jack Wise, who is uh, in the office, by himself, um, getting all of the, the printed materials together, and Mike Murphy, who is uh, helping us so much with the videos. So um, we continue to be community and finding new and creative ways to be community and to be the church in this new day. And so we thank you for for being with us as we, as we move forward and um, uh, to figure all of this out together. And I'd like to tell you what is coming up for Holy Week. We've got something for you just about every day, and on some days we have a couple of things going. Um, and you can, there's a link that you can click on to get this in, in print if you want. But um, Tuesday morning of this week, we are bringing in, we're thinking of the children and parents at home with children, and we want to make sure that we give you resources for being at home. So Sandra Opalka is going to be with us for Godly Play, and that's Tuesday morning, beginning Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. So Godly Play, very suitable for not only families and children, uh, but really anyone who wants to get a great experience of Godly Play. Wednesday morning, we continue with uh, my meditations on uh, the, the daily devotions. Uh, that's at 10 o'clock on Wednesday, beginning 10 o'clock on Wednesday. Monday, Thursday, we will have a Monday, Thursday service for you with a, a stripping of the altar, a modified one, uh, and that's at 7 p.m., be, beginning 7 p.m. on Monday, Thursday. Good Friday noon will be the Stations of the Cross beginning at noon. And at 3 o'clock, another um, event for children, and this is going to be a, a children and family service of the Stations with our deacon Lance Schmitz, who has two little ones at home. Uh, so that's another thing for children, and that will be available beginning at 3 p.m. on Good Friday. Holy Saturday, uh, we will have our normal 10 a.m. devotional with Father Tim Sean. And then uh, Easter Vigil will be Holy Saturday at 7 p.m. And we are going to have, uh, as our preacher, uh, the Bishop Coadjutor-elect Polson Reed with us to preach. So uh, we want to invite you all to be with us on that uh, very wonderful holy evening and especially uh, with our special preacher. And Easter Sunday, beginning at 8 a.m., we will have our own Bishop Ed as preacher. So uh, we've got a, an Easter Day service planned for you beginning at 8 o'clock on that morning. And uh, that's what's coming up, and we ask that you continue to be safe, continue to uh, find creative ways to, to be together as community and to reach out to those you love. And now may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you, and remain with you now and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.